Hello everyone and welcome back to Paper Bag Journeys where today I'm going to be talking about the best 10 books that I've read so far for the year of 2024. Ugh. I knew that was gonna happen. Don't worry, no books were harmed in the filming of this YouTube video, all right? So this is a list that I update every month uh, throughout the year on my channel, and I kind of touch on the titles on the list, but today I just wanna talk about why these books were so great. Why are they on the top 10 list uh, for the year so far? So uh, anyway, let's get started with number 10. Okay, so number 10, barely holding on to its top 10 spot is Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. So this is the second book in the Red Rising series. So I'm not gonna be given any major spoilers or anything like that. Um, is this book a perfect five-star read? Not quite, but it's a solid four-star read. And I do think that it's an improvement on the first book in the trilogy, which was obviously Red Rising. I, I enjoyed Red Rising, but it definitely had that kind of um, like young adult vibe and Darrow, the protagonist in the series, felt a little bit too perfect at times, which made it tough to fully root for him. Do you ever get that when it's there's like a character and he's just, he's too good at everything and you're just like, oh, can't relate, you know what I mean? But anyway, in Golden Sun, things get a lot more interesting. Darrow faces real challenges and you can see him struggle and the choices that he has to make are morally complex, which really blurs the line between right and wrong. Um, what I really like about Golden Sun is how it, expands the universe. The series shifts from that kind of Hunger Games style YA novel in Red Rising to a full-on space opera with all sorts of factions and alliances. It really takes the story to the next level. I liked it a lot and if you're worrying that, oh, you know, is this going to be a little bit YA for me? Um, I'm a little bit on the fence. I, I don't necessarily mind YA novels, by the way, but this feels a little bit like a older young adult, you know? A uh, OYA, if you will. Okay, so coming in at number nine is Recursion by Blake Crouch. I actually read this quite recently, just about a month ago. And this is a sci-fi thriller that revolves around something called false memory syndrome. And this is a condition where people start remembering lives that they never actually lived. They remember being married to people that they've never met and raising children who were never born. And it's almost as if they've lived two lives. They've got their actual life, and then they've got this other life that they suddenly remember having lived in this really vivid detail. And in this book, we follow a detective who's investigating the victims of this syndrome, and also a scientist who maybe has played a part in developing in it. I was a little bit hesitant to read this, honestly, because uh, I read Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, and... I didn't really enjoy it. I also watched the TV show as well, and I didn't love that either. You know, I thought it might have been one of those things where um, it, it might be one of those rare occasions where the screen adaptation is better than the source material. No, not the case. Uh, I, I just didn't enjoy it that much. I'm so glad that I gave this author another chance because I really enjoyed this one and I just found it to be much more compelling and interesting. Um, I wouldn't exactly call it hard science, but... The science made a bit more sense than in um, in Dark Matter, where, I mean, even the protagonist in that, he was acting in illogical ways. He's supposed to be this great scientist. Anyway, I don't want to go on a rant. I didn't really like Dark Matter, but Recursion, good, good book. Okay, so next up is a good friend of mine, Stephen King, Pet Cemetery. So when you ask Stephen King fans what is the scariest Stephen King book, um, this is a title that very often comes up. Pet Cemetery is, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty unsettling. There were parts of this book where, do you ever have it, right, when you feel like you want to kind of lean away from the pages as you're reading them, or sort of like look at the pages through your fingers. This was that kind of experience. It's about a family that moves to a small American town in Maine because 
of course they moved to Maine. You know, this is Stephen King we're talking about. They Like 90% of his books are set in Maine. And they're looking to start over and have this quaint and idyllic lifestyle, raising their children. But what they don't know is their characters in a Stephen King novel. And so things are about to get really bad for them. They discover this kind of mysterious cemetery in the woods near um, the back of their, uh, of their new home, where all of the town pets have been buried over the years. And this little patch has an eerie history and possesses strange abilities. Again, I'm, I'm trying to describe this book to you without giving any spoilers, um, because, you know, some people, they want to go into this not knowing anything about it. So um, this is definitely a heavy book. There's some scenes where I felt the life just being sucked out of me in a good way. And uh, it definitely lived up to its reputation. Yeah, horrifying. Coming in at number seven of the best books that I've read in 2024, it's The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie. Joe Abercrombie is an author that I've only recently started reading, and I think he's becoming one of my all-time favorites. Um, he wrote the first Law trilogy, which I read last year, and I was just blown away by it. Uh, one of the things that I really like about his writing is how he's able to kind of mix bleak world building with a kind of wicked humour. The Heroes is set during a three-day battle where various factions and characters with conflicting motives are all clashing in a struggle for survival and also to take power over this patch of land. So the whole book is just military fantasy. And I think this is a great example of military fantasy. Um, the novel explores the chaos and the futility of war. It's very dark and grim in places. I mean, it is grim dark, so, you know. The sixth best book that I read in 2024 is Hyperion by Dan Simmons. The more I think about this, the more I think, hmm, should this book be a little bit higher? I don't know, maybe... Maybe I'll adjust it. It's, it's really fantastic. This is an absolute classic and a must read for any sci-fi fans. If you're a sci-fi fan, you probably already have read this. Hyperion is set in a future where humanity has expanded across the galaxy, and the story focuses on seven pilgrims as they journey to the mysterious planet of Hyperion. Each pilgrim has a unique story and a reason that they've been chosen, and also a reason that they have decided to take this pilgrimage. And so we join them as they journey together. And one by one, they share their stories to kind of solve the mystery. You know, they, they, they want to inform each other. They're a little bit cagey of each other because they don't know each other and they're all withholding secrets. But one, slowly we start to get this, this picture of why this is all happening. And it's, it's, it's really interesting as you're able to piece together the puzzle. Um, that's really what this book is. It's just a collection of short stories as slowly we put the pieces of the puzzle together and we see that each of their lives are kind of interconnected in some way. One thing I'll say as well is that if you're thinking about reading this book, keep an open mind uh, because the first 50 pages or so can be a little bit tough. There's a lot of new ideas and technologies that are revealed all at once. And I personally found it to be a little bit overwhelming to begin with. But I think if you stick with it, the story becomes much more rewarding as everything starts to make sense. That's kind of really the pleasure of it. Overall, Hyperion does what I want sci-fi to do, and that's to create a world and invite me to spend some time there. This book is just pure, rich escapism with some fantastic characters living really interesting lives. Okay, next up, we've got a return author. It's Stephen King again. Misery by Stephen King. A lot of you are 
going to be very familiar with Misery. Even if you haven't read the book, you might have seen the movie with amazing performances by James Kahn and an Oscar-winning performance by Kathy Bates as Annie Wilkes. I actually didn't know that she'd won the Oscar until recently, and she deserved it as well. She was fantastic in that film. This book is about a famous author named Paul Sheldon who is kidnapped by his biggest fan, his number one fan, Annie Wilkes, after she rescues him uh, Paul is very grateful, but then he starts to suspect that she might be a little bit mental, and his suspicion is correct. She is a little bit mental. She basically forces Paul to write her a new book just for her while keeping him trapped inside her house, and things get really... <laughs> Uh, scary as Paul tries to just find some way to escape this situation. The thing I loved most about this book is Annie. She's actually one of my favourite Stephen King villains of all time. Annie Wilkes is, I think, really terrifying because of how quickly she sh shifts from being kind and nurturing and kind of motherly to wrathful and capable of extreme violence with little to no provocation. And this kind of like unpredictability creates constant tension as you never know when she's about to snap. As you read this, it's told through the eyes of Paul Sheldon and so that's our perspective, kind of looking up at Annie as is she going to go? Is she going to go? Oh, oh, oh. It's, it's terrifying. Okay, number four is Best Served Cold by Joe Abercrombie again. So listen, I've committed a bit of a sin here. Normally with these top 10 lists, sometimes people don't like to have repeat authors. I've done it twice. It won't happen again. But this book, you know, what can I say? It's just really fantastic. Um, it's about a character named Monza Mercato. She is a mercenary who works for a very powerful employer until she's betrayed and left for dead. After surviving that betrayal um, and that kind of like assassination attempt, she finds a brand new purpose to her life, and that purpose is revenge. She's determined to take down her old gang, all of those people who wronged her, and so she gathers the skills and the allies that she needs to take her vengeance. I think if you're into Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill, it's actually my wife's favourite film of all time, um, I think if you like that film, you're probably going to enjoy this story as well. It's kind of like, uh, like Kill Bill meets Game of Thrones. Plus, fans of Joe Abercrombie's other works, like The First Law, are going to be Really happy to see like these familiar faces, these characters from the First Law trilogy making a reappearance. That's one of the really, what I already spoke about one of the things I like about Joe Abercrombie, but one of the other things that I like is that he kind of is able to repurpose characters and having a lot of um, crossover characters popping their heads into the books or playing prominent roles. Maybe before they were just a little background character and now this is their story. So yeah, he's good at kind of creating this massive universe. All of his books are just set in the same universe and it's... It's great. I love, I love being there. I love being there. Okay, so we're about to talk about my top three books that I've read in the year of 2024. Just before I do that, this top 10 list is something that I update every month throughout the year. And so if you're interested to see what books get added as we progress into the latter half of the year, please make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you, uh, yeah, you get notified whenever I do a review or whenever I update the top 10 list. I'm reading a couple of books this month that I'm pretty sure are going to end up on the top 10 list by the end of this month. So uh, honestly, I'm not sure how many of these books are going to end up on the top 10 list by the end of the year. It's, it, it could potentially look completely different. I'll say this though, I think that the top three are going to be really hard to beat. So let's get on to them now, starting with the third best book that I've read for the year of 2024. And that is Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller. So this book is about Willie Loman, a struggling salesman trying to support his family 
Um, and we find him at a time where he's a little bit older. Maybe he's lost a little bit of that salesman magic. It's not working the way that it used to. He's become kind of disillusioned with his job and even the ideals of the American dream. And I got to say, like, I, I found this story to be incredibly impactful on an emotional level because I think it reflects something that a lot of people can relate to. And that's the idea that, you know, you can work hard and you can give everything and yet still not see the, see not, still not see uh, the fruits of your efforts, you know, all of your efforts go unrewarded. And it's about, kind of doing everything that you think you should do only to watch it all fall apart. Uh, yeah, and that's that's hard to watch for characters that the author very early on makes you care about. There are conversations between the characters, really the, the characters is just like one family. It's a father, a mother, and two sons. Um, and some of these conversations that they have reminded me of things that I'd heard from friends and family when I was growing up. Uh, and I think what's truly sad about it is that even though Willie Loman sees that things aren't going as he planned, he still kind of clings on to this dream that he has. And it's that very clinging on that's that's hurting him. If he just kind of let go and released some of his expectations, maybe it would be all right. But yeah, and so we just kind of, it, it, that's, it's, it's really difficult actually. Um, but yeah, I, I think the story's, I, the story is heartbreaking, but it's also beautiful and insightful. I'll say one other thing as well. It's in a little bit of an unusual format since it's written as a play. Um, with character, dialogue, and even stage directions as well. But I just, that never really took me out of the story, you know? It, it's a book that, I mean, look, it's tiny. You can get through this really quickly. You can probably read this in an afternoon with a cup of coffee, you know? Nice little bit of cake. And it's going to stick with you long after. And I highly recommend it. Okay, so number two is... The Dark Forest by Shishin Lu. So this is the sequel to The Three-Body Problem. Again, since it's a sequel, I won't dive into too much detail about the plot. I will say that this is one of the best examples of cosmic horror that I've ever read. If you've seen the Netflix series, which covers most of the first book, I can tell you that things get even crazier and more interesting and more advanced in the second instalment. Um, the book focuses more on ideas and speculative science fiction than on character de development. The characters are, you know, they're kind of weak, honestly. It's, they, they, but that's not the idea of this book. Um, it's really about the concepts that are explored, especially about how humanity might react to an existential threat. It's absolutely captivating. Normally, I'm all about character-driven stories, but this one was just fantastic with the ideas that it explores. And in my opinion, the second book is probably the best book in the trilogy. I've finished the trilogy now, and The Dark Forest was my favorite one. Okay, so that brings us to the best book that I've read in 2024 so far. This is also one of the best books that I've ever read, and I believe that this is Stephen King's favorite book of all time. I could be wrong about that, but I heard a little rumor that this is Stephen King's favorite book, and that book is... Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. What can I say about this book? This book is, I'll just give you the general synopsis. It's about two Texas rangers who own a cattle ranch in Texas, and they feel like their best days are behind them. But then one day they decide that, you know, maybe they've got one more adventure left in them, and they decide to drive their cattle from Texas to Montana. On the face of it, this definitely isn't the kind of book that I'd usually pick up. The only reason that I did was because of the strong recommendations from you guys, for, from my audience. And so I'm just so grateful to everyone who recommended it because this book is an absolute 
gift. The beauty of the book really comes down to the characters. They're so well realized, they feel authentic, and when you read this book, it feels as though you're actually with them on their journey across America, you know, kind of facing all of the the elements the, the, of, of nature and the other threats that they come across. No spoilers, no spoilers. It won the Pulitzer Prize in 1986, if that sort of thing is important to you. Um, and although that's not something that is usually important to me, I don't normally pay attention that much to awards and stuff like that. Um, after reading this, and after reading The Road by Cormac McCarthy last year, which also won a Pulitzer Prize, I'm thinking that maybe I just need to read through all the Pulitzer Prize winners. Maybe that's something that I'll do later with the channel, just kind of read every Pulitzer Prize winner uh, since I was born. Uh, by the way, if you're interested, that was 1985. I know I only look 21, but... It's got moisturized, you know. Uh, when I talk about this book, though, you know, I, 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 it feels like I'm introducing you to a group of friends that I can't wait for you to meet. You are going to love these characters, and I'm just excited for you to get to know them. Augustus McRae has become one of my favorite characters in all of fiction. And in fact, I have made a video that's going to be coming out in maybe a day or two where I give a full review of Lonesome Dove. Uh, it's a non-spoiler review and why I think you should read it as well. And if you're interested in seeing that uh, video, then you can click up here to watch it. This has been my top 10 books of 2024 so far. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it and happy reading.